Welcome to this PLZ Soccer One to One. I'm delighted to say that joining me in the studio is Stuart Kettlewell, the former Ross County boss. Uh, Stuart, thanks very much for joining us on the One to One. I've got to ask you, in the current circumstances and where you find yourself now, how do you occupy yourself in this lockdown? I think it's uh, it's a million dollar question, Peter. I think uh, obviously everybody's the same. We're all a bit bored. Um, but especially coming out of management where it's where it's so hectic. Um, it's just been a case of trying to keep myself fit, uh, getting out, doing as much walking as I possibly can. Um, and I've got four kids to keep myself occupied as well. So um, we're all talking about the homeschooling and whatnot. So uh, it's safe to say I've had a, a, a fair amount of that over the last couple of weeks. But there's been a few low moments. There's, there's, there's no doubt in that. It's It's been difficult at times when you come out of such a... A hectic environment but um no as i say we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll keep myself active and get a wee bit of time with the family which is which has probably been neglected over the years let's take you back um just uh prior to you leaving the club did you sense that the sack was coming yeah i think just for, for, from my perspective it's it's always a situation as a manager when you know that you've had poor results and, and you're on a bad run of form you know it's a possibility you know just looking today at, Frank Lampard losing his job uh, at Chelsea. Um, maybe a lot of people didn't see that coming after a, a victory yesterday. But I think um, it's always tough to take. But I'm honest enough to uh, to take it in the chin. Um, I'm, 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 I'm kind of thinking back, casting my mind back, Peter, and speaking to you after after winning uh, a few weeks back at, at, at Celtic Park and some that we hadn't done as a football club. So you feel that that might be the catalyst to to turn things round, to, to get your league form uh, back in the right direction. Because we started the season really, really well. You know, I thought there was a lot of good performances and uh, a lot of good results in there as well. So um, it, I felt it was that spell. I, I did believe that I could I, I could turn it round. You always do. You always back yourself. But like I say, there's, there, there's no bitterness. There's no ill feeling. Um, I probably, uh, off the back of the 2-0 defeat to... To Hamilton, I probably had a wee feeling that it was a possibility. So straight after the match, when the news is delivered, it, it, it wasn't a great shot. But again, having such an affiliation with a football club obviously makes it challenging. Yeah, I mean, on that point, I mean, I know Roy McGregor. I know he, he, he'll put the money where his mouth is and, and, and try and back managers. And as you mentioned, there, listen, if Frank Lampard, after spending two hundred million, can get the sack, then Stuart Kettlewell can get the sack at Ross County. Um, but uh, with that in mind, is it harder? Was there a personal touch to it? Because he seems he seems such a decent man, and he wants the best for people. And there's always that that connection. Uh, was it was it painful because you had such a long and great association with the club? I think so. You know yourself, Peter. If you've if you've just come to a club and you've only been there a year or two, uh, if you're sacked or you're moved on as a player, it's a little bit easier to take. You know, you don't have a great affinity with the, with the football club. But just casting my mind back and thinking all the all, all the experiences, all the success that I've that I've been fortunate enough to be part of uh, over the last eleven years or so. I think that just does make it slightly more difficult. And I think Roy felt it as much as I did uh, from the point of view that we do have a personal relationship. You know, it was manager and chairman, but uh, having, having been there for such a long time and, and him having done so much for me, um, but also I think I've done a heck of a lot for him as well. So um, there is that genuine connection. And I think he found it difficult. Um, and I probably didn't want to... Uh, stew over it too much, sitting in the office with him after it, because I knew he would have found it a, a, a challenge uh, to, to have to do it. Um, but again, there's, there's, there's no ill feeling. Um, I, I, I'd caught up with him again uh, just last week, um, and the relationship's absolutely fine. Um, there's no there's no spite from me. Um, like I say, it's been a brilliant experience. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it, both being the co-manager and being a manager in my own right. It's, it's been good, but Certainly that co-management side of things was, uh, I, I felt it was uh, a good moment for us. You know, I think we had achieved a, a fair amount, myself and Stephen, winning promotion, winning the Challenge Cup and, and keeping the team in the, in the Premier League last season. So maybe that wee change, and, and I, I don't know, maybe Roy acknowledges that fact now that that change is, uh, maybe wasn't the right thing at the right time. Um, but again, such is life, that's football and um, and, it, and hopefully it opens up a, a, a new pathway for me, it opens up a different avenue 
um, because I've been a, a, I've been in that bubble for like I say, eleven years up in in Dingwall, living up here, um, being in about the same football club for that period of time, which I've loved. Um, but it, it probably just presents a new challenge, a different outlook for myself. Before I talk about what you want to do now, I must ask you, in hindsight, you're a young man, you're only 36. In hindsight, do you think it came too early for you? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, you know yourself, if you get off, you get the offer of a job, which myself and Stephen did um, off the back of uh, own coil leaving the football club, um, you're not 100% sure if you're, if you're ready, if it's right for you. Um, I, I've listened to a lot of different things recently and um, I've heard experienced managers talking about that being such a pivotal thing, you know, to have experience under your belt. But sometimes you need your opportunity. Um, I, I look at it, managed to win a bit of silverware, um, got well over 100 games, uh, been in charge of the football club. I'd sort of served a bit of an apprenticeship, taking the under-20s group uh, here for, for several years. Um, but it has been a bit of a whirlwind, to be honest, the last six years. I finished playing at 30 and then I've had six years of coaching, managing, um, without so much as probably any more than a day or two of a break in between. So it has been a real whirlwind um, and, and probably in hindsight, it comes as uh, an opportunity to take a step back and, and try and refresh yourself and, and gather your thoughts and, and have a look at what comes next. But um, I, 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 I certainly feel I was more than capable of doing the job. Um, I think the track record probably suggests that, that there was a lot of good times in there as well. Um, but it's safe to say that I've come away from it in the last few weeks and, 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 and really thought about the bits that you got wrong because inevitably we all get things wrong and um, I think you're a stupid man if you don't acknowledge that fact as well. So um, I've obviously had a wee time to self-analyse and, and have a look at what was good and what was bad and uh, I've given another opportunity um, how I would go about it. Um, but. I think you've you've just got to learn from, especially the the, the challenging times. You know, the, the night of being sacked. That's the times that you really start to uh, start to learn. I believe you know we can all sit and thrive off of success and enjoy success. But I think there has to be these challenging times for you to to develop as a, a as a manager, as we're talking about. You caught me on the hop there when you said, you know, there was a good period where you were the co-manager with Stephen Ferguson and then suddenly maybe it derailed you a little bit. In that, I mean, lots of people would look at that and say, wait a minute, co-manager doesn't work. Who's in charge? Who's making the decisions? What was good about it that he did one thing and you did the other? I think... I think probably just that, Peter. I mean, we were actually, we probably felt as if we could cover every aspect together. You know, we didn't have an assistant manager as such. It was just, uh, it was that co-manager. So um, we didn't really feel as if it was that strange an experience. Um, we felt as if we complemented each other well, be it the good cop, bad cop. Um, and, and, and we felt that we were both able to dip into any aspect, you know, whether it be the coaching aspect, delivering team talks, uh, analysis, anything at all, we could both turn our hand to it. So um, it probably wasn't that strange a situation. And, and we used to say at the time, I know it wouldn't be right for a lot of football clubs. You know, you look at the bigger clubs in this country, it probably doesn't sit right with a lot of them. But we genuinely felt as if it worked well at Ross County and in a situation whereby we felt that it was right at that time. There was... There was no main ego, you know, when we were taking the job on. There was no guy that, we, there was not one between the two years that was desperate to take charge and to take over as such. Um, we were both happy to try and do what was right for, for the football club. So um, we felt it complemented both us and the football club um, at the time. As I say, you don't want to look back too much. That it, it was a good period. It was a successful period for, for Ross County and amongst a lot of challenges, you know, cutting budgets, etc., where it was, it, it was it was quite difficult. But, um, no, as I say, I embraced the challenge to, to go on and be manager myself, um, which, again, I, I enjoyed and, I, and I've learned a fair amount from. And I know Stevens went on to, to become the chief executive as well. So, Again, football is this ever-evolving subject, isn't it? It's this ever-evolving world, and, and that was exactly what happened. And um, hindsight's a wonderful thing. You maybe say that it wasn't right at the time, but uh, such is life, and that's that's how it's went. Yeah, I nearly fell off the chair there when you said, you know, 11 years, you've only had the odd day off here and there. You've used your time well. You've got four kids, for God's sake, man. Your wife must be absolutely, <laughs> your, your wife must be absolutely delighted. A couple of days I'm off, be, four kids. I'm going to ask a few questions there. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I mean, how how's the wife and the family taking it? Will they view it as great dad's home or is there that situation where she can see that you're itching to get back into it? 
I think she get. I think she can see. I think she wants me at the house, Peter. To tell you the truth, I think she's desperate to get <laughs> shot at me. If I'm being honest, but uh, nah. In, in all seriousness, it was kind of their life as well. Um, it sounds a wee bit corny, but um, I had massive support for them. You know, my wife going to going to games, the kids going to games, supporting the football club because you know it, it was their team. They they, they live in this area. Um, you know, but I had my, uh, one of my sons is he, he was at Hamden all those years back for the for the Scottish Cup final and stuff like that when he was only a matter of months old. So it's kind of been a part of their life. Uh, one of my sons is in the academy here as well. So you definitely have that connection. And I think that was probably the hardest bit was coming back into the house on the Saturday night and sort of facing them up and speaking to them and get asked stupid questions like from my son. Well, I take it that's me. I can't go back and play for Ross County anymore. And they don't quite understand, you know, it's quite raw for them as well. But nah, gradually over over, over the weeks, um, you, you start to you start to get some good quality time with them um, and everybody comes round and you know it's not the end of the world. Um, but again, it's probably got us thinking as a family what is next and, and, and where do we go next and uh, that doesn't necessarily lie up here we're, we're probably thinking more in the lines of, of moving back home I, i'm originally from the from the central belt uh, anyway so um we're thinking at that, that fresh chapter maybe start somewhere else and, and and we've got the wheels firmly in motion to, to try and do that let me ask you before we get to the point of you know what type of thing you would like to do um, you mentioned there about the, you know, you, you've discussed it with your family and you, you, your boy and everybody and said, look, you know, you can still play in the academy. We can, you know, but here's where I think we're going to go. Um, when you eventually get to the point where you've got over that couple of days of disappointment, everybody talks about mental health these days. We've all suffered setbacks. We've all lost jobs. We've all maybe missed out on jobs that we wanted to get. Um, how... How do you deal with, um, you know, the aftermath of Stuart Kettlewell's gone from Ross County and the phone stops ringing? Is, I always find, I always believe that you actually find out who your real mates are once the phone stops. It's, it's, a, it's a brilliant way you've just put it, Peter. I think you, you, you'll never know until you've experienced it. I always, I always liken it to being pretty much like a, 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 a drug you know, when I had to finish playing and I wasn't in the dressing room anymore, you've heard so many ex-professionals telling you that that was that was the bit. You just couldn't wait to get up and especially with a group of guys that I played with up here, you couldn't wait to get into the dressing room and spend some time with them, get the banter, um, have that competitive environment, test yourself every day. And when that's not there, it's just a huge void in your in your life. Was fortunate enough to almost immediately pick up a coaching role and and continue in football in the day to days of that. Um, but you've you've just said it there. When that stops, which it has done a few weeks back for me, um, I, I can honestly tell you that three o'clock on a Saturday is uh, it's, it's not a very nice place to be. It's 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 really really difficult. I think my missus knows that and she gives me a wide berth at that time on a Saturday, especially because you've been used, so used to, for me, pretty much 20 years as a player, coach and manager um, of, of being in, in the mix and being involved in the, the pressures of a, a, of a match day and, and, and how you get your three points. And when that's not there, um, you are seriously left searching. Um, I've had some amazing contact from, from a lot of brilliant people not just in football, but a lot of brilliant people that I know, but especially the kind of football side, a lot of wise people, a lot of folk that have been through this type of experience that have, that have given me some some absolute brilliant nuggets of how to cope with it, how to deal with it, but also how to how to move on. And I'll give you a short one just as an example, and it's it's not really it's not really name drop or anything like that, but um, I've told a lot of people their stories. Sitting that Saturday night that I was sacked, um, I actually received a phone call about 11 o'clock at night from, from Neil Lennon. Um, who I'd got on great with, had a lot of respect for him and, 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 and everything that he's done and what he's had to deal with, especially recently, and how he's how he's been able to do that. Um, but that was the night before the, the, the cup final against Hearts. And for him to pick up the phone and spend a bit of time, his, his approach to how he came on the phone to me, almost to congratulate me for, for what I'd done. So not to sit in the kind of doom and gloom and feel sorry for myself, but... Um, pretty much just that well done for, for everything you've been able to achieve. That I was a young guy in management terms and, and all the rest of it and, and just to assess the options, you know. So it's just wee nuggets like that and and, and for me, especially that one and, and why I tell the story is, you know, you've got a guy sitting the night before uh, the potential of winning silverware that's that's seen it fit to, to pick up the phone and give me a bit of his time and a wee bit of advice and um, and, and almost that sort of put an arm on your shoulder type of thing. Um, and as I say, I'm forever grateful for that. Not not just Neil, but several other guys in the game that have that have done that. 
but as you rightly say, that once once that stops, it's it's where you go next. And I think it's important for me, probably for my mindset, to keep myself going because I've never been one for feeling sorry for myself. I've never been one that wants a pat in the back. Um, but I think that the, the only way that, that that you can sort of solve it, the only medicine, so to speak, is is, is getting back in the horse and, and and whatever that may be. Um, I know we'll touch on that probably in the next few minutes, but uh, whatever that might be, I think is the is the best remedy for for how you're feeling and and that can avoid that's in your life. So somebody's looking and saying, okay, he's been the Ross County manager. Um, where where does he fit in now? What do you want to do? Um, what would you accept? Um, I mean, I, I presume you're well on your way or you've got all the badges. Um, tell me what you would like to do when you move into that central belt area. You're obviously going to be in the, the hub. What job would you like to do? What job would you like to be considered for? Well, I was thinking about the stunt double for David De Gea, as you well know, Peter. I've been taking a bit of stick for that, so I don't, I don't know. Maybe thinking that there's a future in that for me. I, I'll keep the old, keep the old slick back and, and, and see how I go on with that role. Uh, no, no, in all seriousness, again, I, 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 I don't really have a, I don't really have an ego in, in, in such a way where I'm, I'm sitting saying that I, I have to be a manager and I have to be at this particular level. Again, I love coaching. Uh, I love being involved in the game. I've held a number of different roles, worked with different levels of players. Jeez, I was even talking about uh, up until not long before I was sacked, I was still out in the pitch during the week with the academy kids and stuff like that. You know, I, I, I loved any opportunity I could get taking some of the academy sessions, be it with, with kids that are 13, 14. Um, I had such a, a, a massive interest in that. So I think I do have this kind of broad spectrum of having, having worked with we senior players, senior pros at Premier League level, um, but that also filters back down to, to working with young kids uh, in the game. And sometimes there's there's no better feeling than actually uh, taking a group and, and watching improvement over a hour and a half, two hour session just off the back of um, wee bits that you want to work on with them. So, um, in, in all honesty, I'm, I'm I really am open to to, to whatever else, whatever opportunity comes up and hopefully something does come up but uh, I, I, for me it's probably more so about about the project it's probably I, I want to see a situation Peter where I can actually see it moving forward over over a period of time and I know I'm saying that that's one of the, the aspects that you, you that, that maybe I would have to alter but I think you need to be able to go into a job and believe that you can ha you can make a difference and you can see that it's an academy or it's a uh, it's a first team that is going to grow there's definitely scope for something to grow I don't just I, I I wouldn't like to just jump jump into something just for the sake of it. Um, it's, it. It is really important to me, having been a party, what I've been a party up here. It's it's important to me that you can see that opportunity for growth and, and and not only for myself to improve, but whoever, whatever group you're working with, you need to be able to see that there's a chance that that can improve and that your feet aren't constantly getting swiped from underneath you. You, you actually get a chance to to go in and, and make a bit of difference. So um, I, I do believe I, I I can leave it wide open and say that. It, any role within football, um, I, I would have consideration over. I would, I would, I would certainly think about it. Yeah, I, I, with that in mind, you know, you've got all this experience. You've got all the um, uh, opportunity to pass it on to people from a playing sense and in a coaching sense. I mean, some people would not have been able to put uh, what you've uh, achieved and experienced up until the age of 36 uh, down in a CV. So that's to your credit. When you move back down, I mean, it's a strange sort of thing, but it's it's maybe a pal, it's maybe somebody you played with that just looks and says, you know, would you be a, would you be my coach? Would you be my assistant? Is is that something that you'd say? Yep, I'm in there. Again, I I, I, say, I, I'm, I wouldn't rule anything out at all. Peter, I think uh, I think from my point of view, you just said it. I still feel as if I am only thirty six. I, I still feel as if there is there is plenty for me to learn. I think that. Um, I'm, I'm not going to get caught up in, in thinking that I've, I've been a Premier League manager for, for the last couple of seasons and um, at, at the age of 36 and that, this is what I, what I have to do. I probably feel as if I would be the type of person that wants to lead something. I think that's that's important as well. Um, if I felt it was the right opportunity, you know, somebody asked me to come in and assist them or something like that um, to work with the right person, um, again, I, I certainly wouldn't rule it out. Um, but I think, again, just the, with the opportunities I've had of, of being the development coach here and getting a free reign for the likes of Jim McIntyre to just go and do 
what I wanted to do, exactly what I felt was right. I know at times a lot of managers would would butt in and, and want to kind of run the show right across the board, but uh, Jim was great in that sense. He just allowed me to go and, go and do my job and then progressing on to become sort of co-manager, manager. I've enjoyed the, the experience and the, the responsibility. I, I quite like the aspect of me being the one that gets shot at if it doesn't go right because, you know, it's it, it's on you. You have, you have ownership for it when you get up in the morning. You, it probably sharpens you up a wee bit and you know that you have to try and get things right um, otherwise it, it, it falls on you and, and again a big part of my makeup Peter is that I, I'm alright with mistakes as well and, and learning from mistakes you know it's one of my, my biggest bugbearers and I've said it many a time as, as a manager I hate it when, when players or coaching staff don't put their hand up and, 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 and accept accountability or take responsibility because at the end of the day we're human beings there's, there's going to be mistakes so I have enjoyed that aspect of it I have, uh, I have embraced that side of it and probably that would be my first pick to, to, to lead something again to, to try and take charge of something but again I'm stressing the fact that we're in the middle of a global pandemic here it's it's, it's, it's not really going to be that that easy to get a, to get a job there's, there's a lot of cutbacks in football especially um, so we just probably have to wait and see how it all pans out but Hopefully, by moving to Central Belt, it, it, it maybe opens up a few more doors for me um, moving forward. The memories, the highs. Tell me, is there some that stick in your mind that you thoroughly enjoyed because you were you got it so right? Is there some that stick in your mind that you think that's great to remember? Yeah, there was. There, there's been. There's been so many. There's been so many, Peter. To be honest with you, I think. Uh, when I moved up here 11 years ago, um, having just actually been relegated from the championship with Clyde, um, if you're asking me if I, if I genuinely thought that half of what has happened would have done, um, then it would have been a straight out no. Um, but I think from the playing side, yeah, you know, Scottish Cup finals, winning, winning the championship, 40 game unbeaten run, um, fifth in the Premier League, you know, amazing, amazing experiences. You look further along the line, um, winning the development league. That was that was a massive one for me. We were under twenties group who um, hadn't done particularly well. We hadn't we hadn't we hadn't been doing well as a football club uh, for quite a long period of time. We we had younger group, um, so to do that was was absolutely amazing. Um, and then you look at the likes of the the league cup. Jim McIntyre went and won the league cup to be a party. Uh, the football club at that time was was, was tremendous and. And in particular, you know, winning the championship, the uh, the, the Challenge Cup as as a manager, um, keeping the team in the in the Premier League, albeit we we know kind of what happened at the tail end of last season with the decisions that were made, but even that goes in there as well. But there, there, there's been so many, there's been so many, Peter, and uh, I feel really fortunate to have uh, to have been a part of it for for all that time and for all those those, those brilliant memories, but. As I say, it's probably time to take a park all of them. Um, I have enjoyed them. Probably probably look back on them a fair bit in recent weeks just to, again, it's that medicine, just to, to, just to pick yourself up. But um, hopefully I can use all those experiences um, moving forward and, and, and maybe bring a wee bit of that to, to another football club or another situation. Um, but I know certainly that, that I've developed as a person and I've had a, a right good time, a brilliant time um, over the last years, uh, the, the last number of years and in, in being involved in all that. Stuart, it's been an absolute joy talking to you. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed the one-to-one. -one. And listen, fingers crossed the next time I'm talking to you, it's trackside at a game back doing what you love. Thanks for being on. Absolute pleasure, Peter. Thanks for having me on the show.